your, your experience with Coach Elko, I know it goes back a while. Um, what did you see in him when you guys were young coaches, and, and what, are you, what are some of the things that he's done so well? Uh, you know, it was back in 2005. Um, Dave Kloss was the head coach at Richmond, and me and Mike were on the same defensive staff. Um, we've kept in touch. You know, he's uh, he's just he's always been somebody that I've connected well with, and you know, he's smart. Um, he takes a lot of pride in his work, works hard at it, and so I'm glad for his success. <clears throat> Looking back on the Syracuse game, the job that you guys did up front, especially against Schrader, just how pleased were you with that? Obviously, you had success two years ago for it to be kind of the mirror opposite. Yeah, I mean, he's, you know, he's been a problem in our league for a number of years. You know, you know we've got to compete against him three times, but I thought our guys have really, have really come on. You know, um, you know, when you go in the year, you're trying to get as many players involved in in the weekly game plan as you can because it builds depth. You're trying to make sure the guys that have the ability to help you um, are involved. You know, but when you do that, there's a lot of different pieces, you know, that are playing together and you know, just to continue to see them, you know, come through on, on game time and to be able to execute plans. And uh, I was happy for our, for our guys, um, especially up front. I thought we did a good job. It seems like the last few weeks for Shaheen Brown have been really productive. I guess what's clicking for him or what's leading to, to that production? Well, I mean, this is, you know, he's, the, I don't want to say he's a young player, but he's molding into, you know, he obviously last year we, we kind of forced the role onto him because we knew what was there. You know, this year, obviously, he was going to get more opportunities. I think he's taking advantage of them. Um, you know, he still has moments that he would like to, you know, get better at. But, you know, I, I think Shaheem, I think he's got an incredibly high ceiling, both as a player and as a leader. And so we're going to continue to force that with him. I thought he was impactful in the blitz game, which helps us. Uh, we're looking for that. Um, and so you know, I think he's doing a lot of good things right now. And you know, we're excited to see what this week has for him. I feel like this is a question we asked you about, a lot about last year, but less this year. Um, preparing for two quarterbacks, um, you know, obviously, what does um, Riley bring and what does the backup bring? The, you know, how, is there, how are their games different, or are they kind of similar? And how are you going to prepare for both? Um, I mean, we're just going to prepare for both, you know, and um, obviously, you know, Riley Leonard has been, you know, last year he had a really good year. God bless you. We didn't play against him, um, but just having gone back in the summer and watched all of his tape, you know, he does a great job of just having, you know, he, he's, a, he's a really good competitor. You know, he does a great job with his legs, getting out of trouble, uh, extending plays. But I think what he does such a good job of is his accuracy with different arm angles. You know, no matter where the rush is, whether it's a pressure, whether it's a, you know, a defensive lineman in his face, he drops his arm angles or raises his arm angles, probably as good as most quarterbacks in the country. And so you, you put that with athleticism and good enough arm strength to be accurate and accurate at all different levels, you know, and, you know, he showed the ability to step up when, when times were needed for that team here in the last year and a half. So. You know, obviously brings a challenge and, you know, probably expect him to play. And, you know, if the other guy plays, then we, we play against him. And, you know, not to make it obvious and candid, but, you know, it's what it is. At least, you know, we have the game against NC State that, you know, he started the game and played. He's been in, you know, at times during the year just for mop-up duty or other situations. So, you know, we'll study both players and we'll have a plan ready for both. I know there was a, a healthy uh, rotation early and really throughout that game. I don't think many guys played more than half the defensive snaps. When when you get that and when it, I mean, there didn't really seem to be a drop off regardless of who was on the field. I guess how encouraging is that for you that it seemed like it was a consistent effort throughout regardless of who was out there? Well, that's why rotations and planning early in the season, you know, you're, you're going to game one and you put a starting group out there and you got to make decisions. Okay, when do I rotate this position? When do I rotate that position? When do you change, you know, to base, to dime, to nickel, and you know, you you always want to win the game, you know, and so in order to win the game, you got to try to win each play, win each series, win the situations, but then there's a next game coming, and you're trying to develop the depth because you know you're going to need it. Guys go down or guys get tired, um, and you you have to have guys ready for those moments, and you know it's a different approach when you put a guy in because he's the next man up because somebody got hurt and 
as opposed to when you roll a guy through because you have confidence that he can help you, even if there's somebody in front of him playing at slightly higher a level. And so that's the balance of a coach as you're trying to get the right rotations in. And so that's why we force rotations, especially early in the season. Um, now it does. We play so much, you know, match coverage and connected coverage that you got to play with people. And when guys see one thing as something, you got to make sure you're on the same page. And so when you're when you're forcing guys into rotation and, and you're playing a lot of, of different people, you know, you got to kind of have one mind out there. And that's the constant battle that we're. I think as the year goes on, you're you're able to get better at that um, because you just have more reps booked. Um, but you know, we're playing playing better football and you know excited for this week on the uh, on farmer sack uh like the it looked like when the tight end went to release pat went with him mm -hmm. um just it seemed like the awareness that whole game it seemed like everybody knew what was coming and is that as well as they've done done that, that type of just recognition and, and yeah i mean i think in in, in spurts mm -hmm. you know that has happened throughout the year you know what i mean um you know felt pretty good in, in most of the games, to be honest with you, as far as, you know, there are some teams that say, hey, listen, now this is their plan. Uh, but when you have good players and you have a little success, teams go back and try to find out what other teams did against you. So, you know, there are some things that we're repping that maybe LSU showed, you know, and even if it wasn't successful, I know that it could be a good play. And so we'll make guys aware of those things. So I think you're, as the season goes on, you see a lot of that anticipation. Um, and some of it is just, you know, just built up reps. You know, Ira, and just guys have a good sense of how people are going to respond to things that we do. Um, and, you know, there are still some things that we've been practicing for weeks now that we haven't used yet. And you're trying to get that those things ready. Sometimes you put it out there before you're, it's actually ready because you think it's just that much more of a valuable scheme or usage. So you gotta, you got to use it maybe a little bit earlier. But for some other things, you, you know, you just keep trying to pile on the reps. You keep trying to pile on the experiences so you guys react full speed. And I think that's what you saw Saturday, you know. And, you know, there were, you know, some things that we did that we've done a lot. There were some things that we did that we tweaked a little bit that maybe was a different look too. And so, you know, it was just good to see our guys and to see you see it that way because that's how I saw it too. Uh, Duke running back Jordan Waters currently leads the ACC in rushing touchdowns with nine. What kind of challenge does that bring? Well, their offense leads the ACC in rushing, you know, and so, you know, from, and listen, they have I, four offensive linemen that are grad students of sixth year. The other one's a fifth year. I think the running back you're referring to is a senior or a grad. Um, two of the three wideouts are seniors or grads. The tight end, the quarterback is, you know, so, I mean, they've got a very veteran, older group, you know, especially up front. And so I think when you have that, you know, you are able to create run game. And I also think, you know, with the way they manage their football program and their team, you know, I think everybody wants to be number one in rushing, right? Because it creates other opportunities in the throw game. It creates time of possession. It creates physicality. Um, and, you know, knowing Mike and, you know, so knowing how that program is probably put together, I'm sure that's been part of the vision. And so it helps create that vision and put that vision into play when you have older veteran guys up front and you have two good tailbacks. Uh, and then you got a quarterback that, you know, you watch the Notre Dame game, every time they needed to play, you know, somehow, some way, he found, made a play with his feet. You know, he's done that for a year and a half now. So, um, you know, what that's going to look like Saturday, I guess we'll find out. But, um, you know, they obviously have done a really good job running the football this year. You mentioned a few times different areas of growth for you guys this season. It seems like a lot of that is reps and experience for, for players. But how much of it is also, or could it be, like you getting comfortable with a player and knowing, hey, this is what this guy does well in this situation? I guess what is like the balancing act to, to that growth? Yeah, I'm comfortable. <laughs> you know, I've uh, been with these guys a number of times. And, you know, now it's just, you know, they have to, th I have to think like them and they have to think like me. And, and that's important when you go into each game. And you know, that's why you have the meeting times and that's why you have, you know, time together. And, you know, it's important for me, especially in the middle of that defense with the linebackers and the safeties that, because they're the main communicators, you know, that when they see things, you know, they may ask and we've got to be on the same accord with that. But, you know, I think 
you know, you, you want to be as consistent as you can and as dominant as you can every play, every series. And that's the standard. Um, sometimes you don't meet it. And my job is to make sure that all the things that go into that is getting done. And then when it comes to the moment of truth, whether the play's made or not made, I got to keep going back to what's the preparation look, um, what's the, the, the timeline of preparation, what's that look like as far as the effort out there uh, on the practice field, in the meeting rooms, and the walkthroughs. And, you know, I really like coaching this team. And I really like this group that we have on defense. And because every time I ask them to do things, they try to accomplish it. And um, obviously, there, there, there's room for improvement in all ways, or else I wouldn't be here, right? There's always going to be opportunities for, you know, corrections or improvement. Um, but these guys listen, and they care a lot, and they want to play really well. Someone that played, um, seen more snaps, I, I don't know if that's been design or just how the game flow went, Omar Graham. What kind of, you, we've talked about it, like, you know, you call them one of the most improved players. Um, what has he shown, and um, is he part of that rotation now, or is, um, is that just game by game kind of thing? No, he's still part of the rotation. I think, you know, that rotation, you know, obviously with Tatum being down two weeks ago, you know, but you go into that Clemson week, and, you know, Omar, it was basically a four person rotation. Uh, which allowed us to keep those guys fresh. So in the fourth quarter, in the second half, we played really good football. And, you know, Omar has a really bright future, but more importantly, is a bright present right now. And so, yeah, he's he's fully in the plan week to week right now. Um, you know, his reps are there, and, you know, he's got to keep taking advantage of those. I don't know if you ever get to watch any of the player interviews, um, but after the game, uh, Josh Farmer and Shaheem were both there. They both had great games. And there just there just seemed to be like a lot of humility about them. Is that indicative of them, this whole defense? Um, didn't seem forced, it seems. Yeah, I mean, you know, everybody wants attention of success. But I think the strength of the individual is the group. You know, and I think we have a lot of great individuals in, in that room and on this team. Um, yeah, but I think it starts, it's, it starts at top. I mean, look at Mike Norvell. I mean, you know, he has all the reasons to say, look at me and look what I'm doing. And he just shows up and he goes to work every single day. And so when your players see that, that's just how we act. That's how we respond. That's how we develop the program. That's, you know, and, um, you know, listen, it, every day we're constantly trying to, to coach that and, um, develop that, but you got to showcase that as a, as a leader yourself. And it doesn't guarantee you we may say, hey, on this play, you got to end up in this gap when this guy does this. Well, in the same framework, we say, hey, when you have success, you understand it may have been a great pass rush, Jared, but if it wasn't for Josh Farmer or if it wasn't for Renato covering that guy, it probably wouldn't have happened. And that's the same as an assignment. And, you know, in my mind, it's all connected. And so I think you can give the message. But credit to our players for actually listening and, and, and using the message in a way that it comes off because it's not fake because you can't make it up. And, um, but it is constant. You know, it's something that comes down from, from, from Coach Norvell, and I think our players do a great job of living in that, in that mindset. Thanks, Adam. Thanks guys. Thank you. See you all. Thank you.